If your sugar levels are high and your triglyceride levels are high, it's a little bit of an indicator that your liver is overwhelmed. And it's one of like the first kind of indicators of, wow, there's probably some metabolic dysfunction going on here. What's interesting is that the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition had demonstrated that MCT oil seems to lower plasma glucose, but also triglycerides, both of them. The reason that we are concerned with sugar being high as well as triglycerides is because that is a good indicator that the liver is having a hard time dealing with all the sugar that's coming in and it's, well, depositing it as triglycerides and then it can store around the liver and contribute to a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That's a big issue. And yes, there's all kinds of things talking about on YouTube where you can eat this or eat that or whatever, but I just like to look at the research, okay? And this research is pretty interesting. The likely reason that this is happening, and again, I'm not a doctor, I'm some guy on the internet. I lost 100 pounds, so I, yeah, maybe I've got some credibility there, but I'm not a PhD, I'm not a doctor, okay? The reality is when you look at how MCT oil is utilized in the body, it is a very small molecule. So when you consume MCT oil, it sort of force feeds your body fat that can just be absorbed very quick, okay? So the molecules are so small, they absorb directly into what's called the portal vein. And that portal vein drains right into the liver and it goes right into the liver mitochondria. And the liver mitochondria then utilize this fat as a fuel source. Therefore, it's training the liver to be a little bit more of a fat burner. Now, this is great for a lot of different reasons. It's potentially good for body composition and all of that. But when we look at non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and how that functions, well, we are potentially just giving an alternative fuel source, giving the liver a break from having to deal with that sugar having to deal with it and being overwhelmed and depositing it as triglycerides. So the fact that we were able to see both sugar and triglycerides come down with MCT oil consumption, well, that European Journal of Clinical Nutrition study really just painted a very nice picture. Actually, quick break here. I wanna let you know about something called Thrive Market. Thrive Market's an online membership-based grocery store. And when we're talking about kind of adding MCT oil in here and there, they're a great place to get MCT oil as well as a bunch of other things. You can sort by different diet categories. So it's an online grocery store. So like your pantry staples, anything like that, sort by paleo, by keto, by vegan, by vegetarian, whatever, gluten-free. And then you can shop within those categories and it gets delivered right to your doorstep. A lot of times it's more economical in the grocery store too. Plus it's just super convenient because it shows up right at your doorstep. So there is a special link down below because they're a sponsor of this channel. And that link is going to save you 25% off of a membership and get you a free gift when you use that link. So check them out down below. So when I started looking further, there is a study that was published in the journal Molecular Sciences that took a look at pigs. Now, you might be thinking pigs aren't humans, so does this matter? To some degrees, you know, some are gonna shoot it down, but it's still interesting science, okay? Because pigs have very, very, very similar gastrointestinal systems to humans. Well, they found that lipopolysaccharides, okay, lipopolysaccharides are pathogenic compounds that leak through the intestinal tract break through the gut wall into the bloodstream. It happens in all of us. It's not something that only happens to specific people. It happens in higher degrees in typically unhealthy people, but it's always happening to some certain degree. Well, they found that lipopolysaccharides triggered severe liver injury. Okay, when the liver is impaired, it impairs its ability to deal with things, right? Okay, when inflammatory signals are high, it impairs the liver's ability to deal with things, which could potentially contribute to a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease because it can't deal with the sugar, so then it gets turned into triglycerides and that potentially stores around the liver. The point of this study wasn't just the fact that it triggered liver injury. It was the fact that when they gave them MCT oil, it attenuated the liver injury and it lessened the inflammatory response. So MCT oil lessened the negative impact of the lipopolysaccharides on the liver. Now, what does that have to do with a non-alcoholic fatty liver? It has to do with, again, the liver's impairment and ability to deal. But the reason that the MCT oil had this effect was more than likely because of something called a toll-like receptor. A toll-like receptor has to do with our inflammatory response. So when a pathogenic compound, like a lipopolysaccharide, leaks out of our gut and it goes through a toll with a toll-like receptor, 
that toll booth says, oh, hey, you're a bad guy. I'm going to signal the inflammation system. And then inflammatory cascade comes, and that can cause all kinds of different issues, right? Obesity itself is an inflammatory condition too. Okay, But what happens is MCT oil seems to lessen the amount of toll-like receptors. So if we have less toll booths, less toll-like receptors, then that's less ability for them to recognize lipopolysaccharides and trigger an inflammatory cascade. So by limiting that, we limit the potential inflammation triggered by that, freeing up the liver, giving it a little bit of a break. But I think the big piece that we have to look at is how MCT oil can help out fatty acid oxidation. We need the body to be a better fat burner. That is very important. Okay? When we look at how much glucose we consume and how much fructose and how much carbohydrates we consume generally as a society, as a world today, it's no wonder that we're seeing this happen, right? It makes sense. So what happens with MCT oil is it absorbs so fast, again, it kind of forces the body into using fats. There's a study that was published in the International Journal of Obesity and Related Metabolic Disorders that took a look at overweight women and it divided them into two groups, a placebo group and a group that had 20% of their calories coming in from MCT oil. The group that had the MCT oil, they ate the same amount of calories, they lost significantly more weight. Okay, and it has to do with the fact that it upregulated their fatty acid utilization. Their bodies became more efficient and better at using fats, which is again, what we're looking for at the liver level as well. Okay, so I'm not saying that MCT oil is going to solve everything, but it's an interesting thing. Okay, when the calories in a given day are made up a lot of MCT oil, then yeah, we have A, less room to eat sugar because our calories are coming from MCT oil, but B, also just these potential fatty acid oxidation effects. But also, when we see some of the other studies, MCT oils stimulate what are called uncoupling proteins. This causes some of the calories that we take in to be burned as heat rather than store. So more uncoupling proteins means more brown fat, more mitochondrial mass, more heat being dissipated, and that increases our resting energy expenditure, ultimately leading to weight loss. But if we're losing weight and we're in that state, there is a good likelihood that we are potentially decreasing a fatty liver as well. So when you look at the whole nutritional aspect of things, you want to shift yourself from being a heavy, heavy, heavy glucose burner into periodic fatty acid utilization. Not always, you don't have to be in ketosis, you don't have to fast, but MCT oils are going to get you fat adapted a little bit faster and potentially direct you and give you an avenue to use fats a little bit faster. So again, I'm not a doctor, I'm just parlaying the research and all of this is basically stringing together different hypotheses from different research journals. But Take what you want with it. As always, I will see you tomorrow.